This one's definitely a bit more difficult to watch. If you look back at my channel, you'll see a lot of my edits are a bit more lighthearted and exciting and fun, but in this case, not so much. In this video, Benny Johnson went to the city of Philadelphia, Kensington to be exact. And as of right now, there's not a lot of great things going on there. And that's exactly what this video covers. Now this might not be extremely exciting and energetic, but the editing definitely plays a crucial part in telling the story and structuring the tone of the video. And so we're gonna take a look at this and break down the whole timeline of how it was put together. Okay, so here's the timeline and we're actually gonna split this up into some different sections, but for right now, I'm gonna focus on the first section of this. We're also known as a cold open establishing the tone of the first scene. Of course, that includes the music selection. I wanted something that kept that zombie creepy style, but wasn't too slow for the whole song. Then after adding some familiar faces, if you know anything about zombies, we were ready to start. The Walking Dead, The Last of Us, 28 days later, 28 weeks later, I Am Legend, World War Z, Dawn of the Dead, Shaun of the Dead, Paranorman, and on and on and on and on. There is no shortage of zombie movies coming out of Hollywood. Every other piece of entertainment seems to have some type of undead element to it. Why this fascination with the walking corpses? Why zombies? Well, it's a uh, point of mythology that has captivated the human soul for a very, very long time. The unliving, the undead. But did you know that Zombieland isn't just a Woody Harrelson flick? That Zombieland is an actual place in America. But there's an entire neighborhood that is run by literal zombies. Welcome to hell on earth. Kensington, Pennsylvania. A small neighborhood on the outskirts of Philadelphia that is overtaken by zombies. Today, we're going to go to Kensington, Pennsylvania. We're gonna show you how these people live or how they don't live. Welcome to Zombieland. There's probably one thing that really stands out when it comes to the footage, and that's the color grade being so dramatic and grungy, and that's the exact style I went for. I wanted it to feel dirty because, well, that's how it was. And don't worry, it's not like this the entire video. And some other smaller things that you might not have noticed is because the research is being done on a computer, I added a screen overlay effect. And then every time something needed to be focused on, I had it scale out of the screen with a drop shadow behind it. All right, that's enough of the cold open. Let's actually move to the explanation of what zombies are. I really wanted to show at the start of the video just how bad the city actually is and how it feels like there's something off. Okay, so before we go hang out with literal zombies and barely escape with our lives, let's define a couple of things. What is a zombie? Where does the term zombie come from? A zombie is a mythological undead creature that is created through the reanimation of a corpse. Zombies are commonly found in horror and fantasy genres, but the term actually comes from Haitian folklore. Scientists and explorers who traveled Haiti in the early 18th century would come in contact with local villagers who would tell stories of their family members dying, being buried, and then coming back to life through magic, living as the undead. In fact, in the Haitian Penal Code, Article 246, passed in 1864, zombies are actually referred to any person of substances which, without causing actual death, produce a lethargic coma, more or less prolonged. And a zombie is defined as somebody who is in a lethargic coma more or less prolonged. The term zombie began to capture the fascination with authors, writers, and directors. Multiple zombie books were then written, zombie films exploded onto the screen, and even Michael Jackson made a zombie music video. Real quick, before we move on here, you'll notice that I'm pretty much adding sound design for everything when it comes to transitions and clicks and pretty much anything you can see in this sequence. I'm doing my best to add a sound effect and it really helps add that depth in the edit. Also talking about clicks, you'll notice that I added this small clip that shows the mouse clicking 
back. It's these small things that people don't really pinpoint, but subconsciously it makes it flow a lot nicer. But in spite of all of the zombie folklore and all of the zombie mythology that can be found in pop culture, real zombies do in fact exist today. And they're far more like the zombies of the original Haitian folklore, a tormented soul who is in a lethargic coma prolonged. Ladies and gentlemen, this lethargic coma is not brought about by magic or voodoo. This lethargic coma is brought about by mainline narcotics. The neighborhood of Kensington is ground zero for the zombie apocalypse in America, with the rise of a drug called xylazine or trank, which enhances the effects of other drugs like heroin, cocaine, and fentanyl. Over 90% of the heroin in Philadelphia has trank in it, which is why the neighborhood has become a post-apocalyptic horror show. Addicts and dealers roam the districts like Walking Dead, selling this deadly animal tranquilizer in broad daylight. The stench of rotting flesh, human feces emanates in the air. No cops, no law enforcement, just hordes of zombies. This is zombie. I hope you believe in zombie stories because you're living in them. On that note, I want to talk about the risers, which is a sound effect that we just ended on. Putting risers throughout the section, transitioning into other pieces, helped build that tension and keep the viewer interested. When a riser is included, it's setting you up for the next thing. Yeah, so as we move into the actual area, the music starts to dim down a little bit and it slows down as far as the pacing of the video and really gets into the actual trip that was taken and showing everything that's going on. As soon as you enter the outskirts of Kensington, you begin to see people behaving strangely, flopped on parks and benches and public spaces, people acting completely zoinked out of their brains. And then you get into downtown and you step out of your vehicle and you realize exactly how sunken this place is. There are needles every couple of steps that you take. You can smell trash and filth everywhere. You can hear the sounds of people screaming, and those people are often screaming at you, telling you to get away or to stop filming them. They point at you with arms that have open, gaping sores on them. People walk by you, strung out entirely, uh, yelling, hurling insults, and hurling their own bodies. In fact, it required us to have personal security just to walk through downtown securely with our cameras. How did this place get this way? Raphael explained to us what Trank is and how it gets to the street and who keeps that Trank flowing. What happened here? Tell me, uh, tell, what's the story? You know, the story is, as you see, they're giving out needles, and so far they've been giving out needles and crack pipe over 10.5 million. That's uh, harm who, prevention. Who's they? So it's, and, and really the city. So who's that? Is that the city, yep, city of the Philadelphia? City. Yep. Okay, yep. so the demo, so the yep. leaders of Philadelphia. Yep. They give out crack pipes, they give, they give out, out needles. Pipes. Yeah, like nothing, as you see. So, so Trank is a tranquilizer mixed with actual fentanyl that they've been given to the addicts now. It's been almost over 10 years now, little by little, gradually going in, taking away from the heroin business and everything. So because it's more cheaper, it makes more profit. As you can see, it even causes more damage everywhere, you know, so. Now you'll immediately notice that the color grade is slightly different, not as dramatic it's still a little bit dirty and has those green tones to it, but it's lightened up a bit to get started in the travel. And then throughout, it's cutting to the voiceover, showing the right clips at the right time. Here and there, there's a little bit of effects, but editing really is knowing when to cut and when not to. And so if you get that down, then you're doing something right. Then later on in this section, you'll notice that the black bars have gone away whenever the title sequence showed up and that's because in the voiceover i wanted to give it more of a cinematic feel and that comes with black bars it was an artistic choice to show black bars for different sections and you'll see it more later in the video speaking of later in the video let's move later in the video so this next part of the video is actually a bit more emotional and my job was to really portray that in the edits and make the viewer feel that emotion. And so that's exactly what I tried to achieve with this. The last place that you would expect to see any decency or light 
kindness from the human soul is inside of this darkened zombie land. As a testament to the human spirit and the human soul, we met an angel named Sue Clifton, who was on her knees mending to the wounds of the zombies. Why did she do this? She was using her own money and her own resources to buy medical equipment to help these people, these lost souls. Sue had this to say about why she heals the zombies. Because I can't say, if, you know, I'm part of a political party that believes that we're pro-life. Yes. Right? Yes. Well, it's all life. This is somebody's son. That's right. He's somebody's brothers, you know? There's brothers and sisters and mamas and grandpas, and this is why we do it. This is God's son. This you, is Christ, exactly. this is Christ, yeah, this you is a son of God, yeah. You're just pro-life on one issue. We have to bloom the two. What about the grandmas and grandpas? So what is it that keeps bringing Sue back to engaging in this Good Samaritan behavior? We were fascinated watching her mend the open sores that were so disgusting we could just barely even look at them, yet Sue, who is not a medical professional, was out here helping these people. What is it that drives her? Anybody can love people who are lovable, you know? But what about the people that nobody wants to love? These are all God's children. I'm sorry, that's all I had to say, because it's like, it's not political, it's not, this is who I am. And it, I'm sorry if people don't understand, this is how our country was founded. We took care of each other. And why is this happening? We had to ask someone who's taking so much of her own life into her hands. There were many violent people on the streets. They yelled at us, they screamed at us, they threatened us. Sue lives among this every single day. She chooses to do this. This is why. So at four o'clock in the morning, samples come through, the drug dealers come through with all kinds of experimental nonsense. People are getting high passing out and doing all types of stuff. But one of these drugs, what it does is it causes these abscesses. And they're open wounds. Can you show me the outside of your hand? Very deep, open wounds. Um, and so basically, we're treating them with colloidal, we're, we're accessing the abscess, and then we're um, colloidal silver, antibiotic, and then we're binding all the wounds. So the drug dealers come through, they, they release new drugs, yeah. and then you come through and treat them. Sue's story so moved us that we decided to help her out in our own way by supporting her ministry. Americans give a lot to other countries, uh, but we don't realize that it's this country, it's our own country that needs the help. It's a third world country here. It's a third world country, yeah. I'm, doing, I'm gonna give you $20,000. I'm gonna give you $20,000. You can pay whatever tax you want on it and I'll be happy to pay the tax on it. Take care of people. Yes, we will. Time for us to start giving to each okay. other. Yeah, <laughs> take care of people. To set the tone, the music is already a little bit more emotional. And with that, the grade also changes. The grade pretty much changed every single section in this to fit the style of each one. But a part in the editing that was really significant was when he said that he'll donate $20,000. I'm done, I'm gonna give you $20,000. If you didn't notice, I added keyframes to the music to raise the volume a bit and make it a lot more impactful. Something about doing that just really brought life and emotion to the situation that was happening. And as an editor, that's your purpose, is to really magnify what's happening for the viewer. And with that being said, on to the next. And moving out of that section, we get to the part where we actually discuss how we're going to attempt to fix this and to also show you the destruction that's happening in the city with the buildings and everything being torn down and really what's happened. While we were in Pennsylvania, we decided to reach out to a Republican presidential candidate that we knew would be in the area. Vivek Ron Swamy is running for president as a Republican. This was back in July and, of course, whenever he was running for president. Obviously, things are a little bit different now, but that's the time this was filmed. We asked if he would come down to Kensington and meet us in Zombie Town to see for himself. And Vivek, of course, 
Agreed. The true question of the visit was about the moral rot, because what you're seeing in Zombie Town is, of course, the end result of decades, a century of bad policy. Unified leftist control of the city of Philadelphia has brought us to this. This didn't happen overnight. This was planned. You could see shining through even the hell on earth in Kensington, some of the glories of days gone by, the beautiful buildings, the quaint communities, and the neighborhoods, the factories that used to knit a place together. Vivek had this to say as it pertained to the moral rot in the country. This was a thriving community. About yes. 60 years ago, it was actually something that was, was actually a place that was thriving on its own two feet. Irish immigrants, German immigrants, thriving working class community. That's right. You can still see the beauty behind the chipped paint. That's right. You can do. still see the architectural beauty. You do. Absolutely. You know, here. Like somebody loved that house. Somebody lived and grew up in that house. And totally. like children lived there and were raised there. And when that's gotten hollowed out, it's the combination of, and I'm not just some protectionist that just says, oh, we need to just bring industry back for the sake of protecting ourselves, but just describing what happened. Hollowed out from industry offshore to places like China, fentanyl now made in places like Wuhan, crossing our southern border, effectively addicting communities like this. You look at people living out in the streets. I asked that cop, what are most people dying of today? He said, hands down, it's fentanyl. A lot of the problems start at the nation's edges, but find their way to the nation's center. And that's what we're seeing today. Vivek walked the streets with us and also interacted with some of the zombies, so to speak, the sad and unfortunate individuals who live in zombie town. We've never seen anything like it. Watch. I want to see how we can help. Thank you, man. More shelters. I appreciate that. More shelters and more food banks. Because you guess you're going to be a vice president, president, right? Some more shelters. And more food banks. More food banks. Yeah, because we're the shelters that don't fit. Look, more help. Look, I look, right there. That's a shelter right there, and they're sleeping outside. You see that? You can take a picture of this. Look. Where? That's the shelter? Yeah, it's not a very good shelter. That tent, there's like 80 people sleeping in there. It's not a very good shelter. Where? That tent. Yeah. They, they open up the gates and come in, and then they close the gates down. And they let everybody out at 5 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, unfortunately, there's a lot of nonprofits that be out here that they fund, and we call them poverty pimps because they're not really doing anything, but they're getting all this money. Poverty pimps. Yeah, poverty pimps. Who's getting the money? A lot of these non fake nonprofits that come out here do photo ops, but they're really not doing anything. Oh, really? Ultimately, we'd never seen a presidential candidate ever this close to a junkie, to somebody who's using open drugs in the streets. It's commendable that somebody cared enough to actually walk these streets. Part of probably why Vivek is surging in the polls right now and is arguably the number two candidate in the presidential cycle. Vivek Ranswamy was unafraid to stare the zombies and the problems that created these zombies in the face. I think that's something worth noting. While watching this video, it's quick to notice that everything has the same style. When it comes to assets, when it comes to effects, they're all pretty grungy, like what you'd expect a quote unquote zombie land to be like. And just like the grade, the music changes pretty much every section in this entire video. For instance, in this section, it's pretty eerie. It's subtle, but noticeable. Vivek also had a cameraman with him as well that was videoing so Luckily, we were able to get that footage. It actually wasn't necessarily for us, but they went ahead and sent it to us to use, and that was pretty nice. And moving out of this piece, we go to the final destination in this area. More of an interview type of section with someone who's really wanting to make a change in this area. And with that, the edit transitions to be a bit more uplifting. With every black cloud, there's a silver lining, and the silver lining of the people who are staying in Kensington, who are not zombies, who wish to save the place, because Kensington actually had a beautiful history to it. Kensington was a major warehousing district and a major manufacturing district. An enormous amount of textiles and homemade goods came from Kensington, and it's what built up the beautiful community that has now been destroyed and hollowed out. One of the people who are sticking around and attempting to revitalize the area is local politician and developer Sam Orpiza, who has offices in Kensington and who is renovating some of the old factories, turning it into condos, living space, 
Sam tells us a story about his fighting background, what he wishes to do to fight for the city of Philadelphia. This one. So that was uh, when I fought. This is you? That's me, yeah. Uh, that was my first big fight. It was Strike Force. It was at the IZOD Center. You know, it was like my first big fight in a big arena. Like Rocky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely like Rocky. That's, not, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So after I got done fighting, I started a family. I thought getting hit in the head was a bad idea. <laughs> and I got the uh, crazy idea to get into commercial real estate. And uh, I've been in the industry since 2016. It really was watching Donald Trump run for office was one of the most inspiring things in my life. And it made me want to change my life for my family. So that's really how I got into commercial real estate. Can you show us what's going on around yeah. here? When you drive through Kensington, right? Yeah. How much lower can it go? I mean, how are we not at rock bottom, right? And when you're at rock bottom, the only way to go is up, you know? And there are people in this community that want to see a change. It's not like we're the only ones trying to make positive change. We're one of many that are fighting for this neighborhood. And you know, it, it, it helps take care of that side of my brain where I need danger almost to be engaged all the time. You know what I mean? From being a former <laughs> professional fighter. That's interesting. Yeah. 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 That must be in your personality. I think it is. Yeah. I need a high level of excitement to feel. So normal. you need a fight. Yeah. Yeah. Atop one of Sam's buildings, you can see the expanse of downtown Philly, along with Kensington itself. How did it get so bad here? Sam tells us. When houses become abandoned here, they'll get taken over by the addicts and or the dealers or both. So this street right here in particular is a notorious, you know, drug block. Um, and, you know, these dealers are basically on a waiting list. As soon as one, one leaves, there's another one ready to take their place. Sam has bright ideas for this area. And it starts with getting rid of the zombie apocalypse. This is one of the newer units that we're doing. This is a uh, two bedroom, two and a half bath. Um, we put all top end, high end appliances, uh, quartz countertops, the, you know, the newer style of cabinets. And this is a poured concrete building. So it is a very, a uh, safe and secure building. We try to keep the old parts of the building that you'll never be able to recreate, like the old brick that are in here, um, and kind of integrate the old with the new. You think you can save this place? Uh, look, whether I can or can't, I'm still gonna wake up every day and you know do my best to, to make a difference. You know, I, I think it's more falling in love with the process than you know the, the destination. Oh, a fighter. That's a fighter. <laughs> it's a fighter. Probably the fighter. Yes. So I'll say this really quick because I mean I've been talking about grade a lot, but it is changing every single section. So right at the start, you'll see that while you're inside the city, it still feels dirty and grungy. But when you leave the city to go to another area, like they did, uh, the grade gets a lot more clean. The whites are pure and it's a pretty clean looking grade. Now the music is somewhat intense in this, but it's more of a fighting type of intense because that's what he's doing. He's going to fight for it to be a better place. And so all these things play a purpose in the setting of the video. And like I said, it was a bit more of an interview type of style. So there wasn't too much to do with graphics besides uh, there was a flashback sequence that there was sound design added to and all that kind of stuff but we actually did have to cut down this interview a bit just to kind of get straight forward to what was said to flow nicely with the video and of course here and there I'll pop up the words on the screen which is a good way to keep someone's attention because if they have something to read, they'll read it. So doing that every so often can help. And then you'll notice at the end that the music fades out. So let the conversation just sit for itself before we transition into the outro piece. And then closing off the entire video, we built out a outro section with a bit of VO over it, just kind of covering and sealing off the rest of the video. Ultimately, the four people that we met with when we went to Zombieland showed us the broad range of individuals who are still, in spite of everything, attempting to help these people, whether it be politically, or whether it be physically, or whether it be spiritually. It was uplifting. I didn't intend on having a happy story to tell about one of the darkest places in America, but here we are.
on the vanguard of the situation. Yep. And that's the whole timeline. With these types of videos, it definitely takes more focus on the emotion and building the tone of the actual video when it comes to color grading, sound design, music. And it's very important, definitely whenever a video covers a more serious topic. Stuff like this isn't always the most fun to talk about, but it definitely needs to be brought to light because how is it gonna be fixed if nobody knows about it. To really express the issues that's going on here, you definitely need a good edit to do so. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you at the next edits.